Hey developer and welcome once again to another Cold World video. On these days I was hired as a freelancer to configure a self-hosted web RTC server. Between Jitsi, Janus and Currento, I decided to move on with the Janus Gateway project. Janus is an open source general purpose web RTC server designed and developed by Mid Echo. This version of the server is tailored for Linux systems. In this video, I will explain you how to install properly Janus Gateway with all the possible extensions in your Ubuntu 18.04 server. The configuration will be done on future tutorials. Having said that, let's get started. In order to compile Janus from source and install it in your Ubuntu 18.04 distribution, you will need some dependencies installed on your system. You can install them one by one using apt install. To make this process quite easier, we will create an sh file with all the instructions that you need to follow in every step. In this case, the first sh file will be install dependencies, which will install all the dependencies that we need to install before proceeding. We will create the files using the nano editor. Once you paste the instruction on the terminal to exit nano, type Ctrl X. It will then ask you if you want to save it. Just press Y and the file will be saved. We can then run the sh file using the bash command and passing as Fears argument the name of the file. The first packages will take about 300 megabytes of space in your disk. Despite what you could imagine because of the name of the library, LeapNice implements the Interactive Connectivity Establishment ICE standard. It provides a JLeaf-based library, LeapNice as well as GStreamer elements to use it. Janus requires this library to work, however the version of the APT repository doesn't work so well, instead you will need to download and compile it from source. Create the install LeapNice sh file and paste the shown content on the file. Remember that you can find all the commands and content of the sh files on the official article that you can find in the description of the video. Run the sh file with bash and wait for the installer to finish. Janus needs as well the libsrtp library to be installed on your system. LiveSRTP is a library for SRTP, Secure Real-Time Transport Protocol, available from the official Cisco repository at GitHub. This package provides an implementation of the Secure Real-Time Transport Protocol, the Universal Security Transform and a supporting cryptographic kernel. Create the install LiveSRTP sh file and paste the shown content on it. Then run the installer with bash and wait until the installation finishes. SCTP is a message-oriented reliable transport protocol with direct support for multi-homing that runs on top of IP or UDP and supports both version 4 and version 6. Janus requires this library to work properly, so as we did before, we will compile the library from source. Create the install usr SCTP sh file and paste the shown content on it, then run the installer with bash and wait until the installation finishes. As a personal recommendation, although it's not required to install this library, using WebSockets with Janus is quite comfortable for the front-end. LibWebSockets is a flexible, lightweight, pure C library for implementing modern network protocols easily with a tiny footprint, using a non-blocking event loop. Create and install LibWebSockets sh file and paste the shown content on it, then run the installer with bash and wait until the installation finishes. MQTT is a machine-to-machine -machine Internet of Things connectivity protocol. It was designed as an extremely lightweight published subscribe messaging transport. It is useful for connections with remote locations where a small code footprint is required and or the network bandwidth is at premium. 
create the install mqtt sh file and paste the shown content on it. Then run the installer with bash and wait until the installation finishes. Nano MSDG is a socket library that provides several common communication patterns. It aims to make the networking layer fast, scalable and easy to use. Implemented in C, it works on a wide range of operating systems with no further dependencies. This package doesn't need to be compiled from source as it is available in the apt repository. Update the repository first and then install it with sudo apt-get install lib nano msg and wait until the installation finishes. This library is a C language MQP client library for use with the version 2.0 or greater of the Rapid MQ broker. Create the install MQTT sh file and paste the shown content on it. Then, run the installer with bash and wait until the installation finishes. After installing all the libraries that Janus need to work properly, you will finally be able to compile Janus itself. The first thing we need to do is to clone the source code of Janus from the official repository at GitHub. Once it has been cloned, switch to the directory of Janus Gateway. Once you're in the Janus directory, generate the configuration file running the sh autogen sh command. Then, run the configuration file with the configuration that you need. The following command will initialize the default Janus instance with almost everything that you need to get started. If you ever need to enable or disable some extension, you may simply repeat this process and that's all. For more information, refer to the official documentation of Janus. You may now simply build Janus using the make command. Then, run the make install command to install Janus on the defined pad on the configure step. Don't forget as well, only the first time of building Janus, to copy the default configuration files on the installation pad using the make configs command. This will place the example configuration files of Janus in the default directory. After following this extensive tutorial, you will finally be able to test if Janus has been built properly. In this case, we will verify that the binary exists in the installation directory and we will run the binary with the help argument. This will print the version of Janus, the last commit hash and all the possible options that we can set up during its initialization. Thank you so much for watching this video, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and visit our codeworld.com for more awesome content about software development. Until next time.